This is section 2.2, adding integers. We're going to look at adding two numbers with the same sign. So either two positive numbers or two negative numbers. If we're adding two positive numbers, we could go ahead and do the addition. But let's look at how we would use a number line to do this. We're always going to be starting at zero. So that's always going to be our starting point. And then we're going to use arrows to represent the numbers that we're adding together. So our 2 is going to be rep represented by an arrow that goes 2 units to the right. And our 3 will be represented in, by an arrow that goes 3 units to the right. So we're starting at 0. We're going 2 units to the right for a positive 2. And then starting there, we're going three units to the right, and that gets us to the end of our problem. If we look at where that ends up on the number line, it ends up at five. So the answer to our addition problem is positive five. Now let's look at an example with two negative numbers. We can do this the same way, only our numbers will be represented by arrows that go to the left since these are negative numbers. So we have our number line again. We're going to start at zero. We're going to go negative, we're going to go two units to the left for our negative two. And then starting there, we're going to go three units to the left for our negative three. Where we end up is negative five. So the answer to this addition problem is negative five. Let's look at adding two numbers with the same sign a different way. Another way we can think about this is to find the absolute values of each of the numbers and add those together. Once we've done that, then the sign that the two numbers had in common is the sign of our answer. So here are some examples. If we're trying to add negative 3 and negative 5, we could find the absolute value of each of these. So the absolute value of negative 3 is going to be positive 3. The absolute value of negative 5 is going to be positive 5. So if we add those two absolute values together, we get 8. So that was step 1. Now for step 2, we have 8 but the sign of our answer is going to be the sign that these two original values had in common, which was a negative sign. So our final answer is going to be a negative 8. Oops, I wrote into my next problem. Okay, another problem. If we have positive 5 plus positive 2, now again, we could go ahead and add these two and get 7. But if we think about what we just did, we'd look at the absolute value of positive 5 plus the absolute value of positive 2. Well, the absolute value of 5 is 5. The absolute value of 2 is 2. So we would get 7. Our final answer for our original problem is going to be 7 with the sign that these two original numbers had in common, which was a plus sign. So this would be plus 7 or positive 7. Now, for adding two numbers with different signs, Again, we're going to look at two different ways to do this. First with the number line, a positive number is going to be represented by an arrow to the right. A negative number will be represented by an arrow going to the left. So our positive 2 is going to be an arrow to the right, 2 units, and our negative 3 is going to be an arrow going to the left, 3 units. And again, we're going to start at zero. So we'll start at zero and go two units to the right. And then we'll 
start at that point and go three units to the left. So it's going to look like this. Here's our start and we went two units to the right and then from there we went three units to the left. And where we end is the answer to our problem. So the answer for this problem is negative one. Now let's look at a slightly different example. In this one we have negative two and positive three. Since this is negative, that means it's going to be an arrow to the left two units. Since this is positive, it will be an arrow going to the right three units. So here's our number line. We're going to start at zero again. We're going our two units to the left, which ends us up here. And then from there, we're going three units to the right. So we're ending up right here. And that gives us positive one. Here's another way to think about adding two numbers with different signs. Again, we can think about using absolute values. So what we would do is find the larger absolute value minus the smaller absolute value. And then for our final answer, we use the sign of the number that had the larger absolute value as the sign of our sum. So for example, if we have negative 4 plus 5, we're going to think about the absolute value of negative 4, which is 4, and the absolute value of 5, which is 5. So between these two, the one with the larger absolute value is 5. So we're going to find the difference of the larger absolute value minus the smaller one. In other words, we're going to take 5 minus 4 which gives us 1. Then for our final answer, we look at the 1 and we use the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. So whatever sign the 5 had in our original problem is going to be the sign for our answer. So that means that this ends up being a plus 1. Here's another example. If we look at the absolute values of each of these two numbers, the absolute value of 6 is 6. The absolute value of negative 8 is 8. So the 8 has the larger absolute value. So that means we would go over here and find the answer for 8 minus 6, which is 2. Then for our final answer, we go back and look at the sign of this number in our original problem. The sign for that was negative. So that means our final answer is going to be a negative number. So it will be negative 2. Well, we talked about opposites and if you're adding a number and its opposite you'll always get 0. Okay, let's do some examples. And for all of these you can either use the number line method or the absolute value method. Whichever one works better for you. Let's look at this first one with absolute values. And one of the first things you always want to do with problems like this is notice whether the signs of the numbers are the same or different. In this one we have two numbers with the same sign since they're both negative. That means that we're going to find the absolute values and just add them together. So we have 23 and 17. If we add those together, we get 40. Then we're going to take the sign that these two had in common, which was a negative. So that means our final answer is going to be negative 40. For this next one, let's use the number line method. Now remember, if we're using a number line, if the number is negative, that means it'll be represented by an arrow going to the left. So for both of these, we're going to have an arrow going to the left. This one will be going 11 units to the left, and this one will be 2 units. So let's start out with our 0 way over here so that we have enough room to do this. 0 is always our starting point for this. So we're starting at 0, 
and going 11 units to the left. And that's going to get us to negative 11 on our number line. Now we're going to start from that point and go another two units to the left. So these we can mark on here. If that's two units, that means we have negative 12, negative 13. So this was our starting point. And this is our ending point. Since we ended at negative 13, that means that our answer is negative 13. Okay, for this next one, let's use the number line again. And notice when you use this number line method, you don't have to mark every number in between. For example, up here, I went straight from 0 to negative 11, just so that you know that there are other integers in between there. So this one, let's put 0 right in the middle. And since this is negative 29, that means it's going to be 29 units to the left. Since this is a positive 14, that means it's going to be 14 units to the right. So if we start at 0, and we go 29 units to the left, that gets us to negative 29. So here was our start. Then we're going to go from that point and we're going to go 14 units to the right. So in this one you could actually count off the 14 units and see where we would get to. Where this is going to end up is at negative 15. So that means the answer to our problem is negative 15. Now from this you can see that sometimes this number le line method is a little bit hard to use. If we were going to use the absolute value method for this one, then we would have found the absolute value of negative 29, the absolute value of 14, so we'd have 29 and 14. Now since these two numbers have different signs, that means we would be subtracting the two numbers. We're putting the 29 first because it was the larger of the two absolute values. That gives us 15, and the sign for our answer is the sign that went with the larger of these two absolute values, which was a negative. So that way we would get the negative 15. So that's just two different ways to come up with the same answer. Okay, finally for this example, let's go back to the absolute value method. And notice in this problem we have two different signs. We have a plus for the 46 and a minus for the 54. So our absolute values are 46 and 54. The 54 is bigger, so we're going to subtract Take 54 minus 46, which gives us 8. And then we're going to take the sign that went with the 54 in our original problem to get our final answer. That was a negative, so our answer ends up being negative 8. Here are some more problems to do. Notice that these ones have more than two numbers that we're adding. So keep in mind with these that since we're adding we still have the commutative property which means that you can switch the order of the numbers in the problem if you need to. So for this one let's start out by adding the positive 23 and the negative 19. So we have our absolute values, 
Notice in this one we have numbers with two different signs since we have a plus and a minus. So the larger of these two is the 23. So that means we're taking the 23 minus 19, which gives us 4. And then the sign for this is the sign that went with the larger of these two, which was a plus. So that's going to give us a plus 4. So now we have 4 plus a negative 8. So again, when we look at these two, we have two different signs. So our absolute values are 4 and 8. 8 is the larger of these two, so we're going to subtract, take 8 minus 4, which gives us 4. And then we want to take the sign that went with the 8, which was a negative. So that sign is going to be a negative. So we end up with a negative 4. Now let's do the same thing for this example. Let's start out with the negative 16 and the positive 14. We have two different signs, a negative and a positive. So the absolute value of negative 16 is just 16 and the absolute value of 14 is 14. 16 is the larger of those two, so we're going to take 16 minus 14. That gives us 2, and then we want to take the sign that went with the 16. So if we look up here, 16 was negative, that means that we're going to make this a negative 2. So now we have negative 2 plus 2. To get this, we could use either of our two different methods, but the other thing we could do is to notice that these are opposites of each other. Negative 2 and 2 are opposites. That means that we can use the hint that we had, which said that if you add two numbers that are opposites of each other, you get 0. So we were able to do that without really doing any calculations, just by noticing that the numbers are opposites of each other. Okay, finally in this one, we have four different numbers to add together. And again, we can do this in a variety of different ways by using the commutative property and the associative property. So let's start out by adding these two values together and then we'll add these two values together and then we'll add the results together. So for these two, notice that we have the same sign for each one. Both of these are negative. So the absolute value of negative 25 is 25 and for that we have 4. That means we're just adding these two together which gives us 29 and then we're taking the sign that these two had in common, which was the negative. So that gives us a negative 29 there. Now if we look at the negative 2 and the negative 6, we have the same thing here. We have two numbers with the same sign. So our absolute values are 2 and 6. Since these had the same sign, we're just adding the two together. Oops, so 2 plus 6 is going to give us 8. And then we take the sign that we had that they had in common. So since this was a negative, we end up with negative 8. So now what we have is we added these two together and got negative 29. We added these two together and got negative 8. Now we have one more addition to do to finish this problem. So for adding negative 29 and negative 8, we have our absolute values. Since these have the same sign, we're just adding those absolute values together. So we get 
37. And then since these were both negative, that means we end up with a negative 37 for our answer. And we can also solve problems by adding integers. These first two problems are just a question of translating what the words in the problem mean. So remember that sum means addition. So what that means is that we're just adding these two. So we're taking negative 7 plus 25. So again, all we're doing here is translating from the word sum to the plus. Now to do this, since these two have different signs, we're looking at their absolute values and the 25 is the larger one. So we take 25 minus 7. I'm going to continue this up here so I don't run out of room. 25 minus 7 is 18. And then we're going to take the sign of the larger of these two, which was the 25. So since that was a plus, then this ends up being a plus 18. So our sum is 18. Here's a similar example, only we're finding the sum of three different numbers. So we're finding the sum of negative 52, positive 13, and negative 82. If we want to write this out with our math symbols, it means we would have negative 52 plus 13 plus negative 82. So let's add these two first. Notice these have different signs. One is minus and the other one is plus. Our absolute value of negative 52 would be 52. The absolute value of 13 is 13. Since the 52 is bigger, that means we're taking 52 minus 13. That's going to give us 39. And since our sign for the 52 was negative, we end up with a negative 39. So now what we have is negative 39 plus a negative 82. Now these two have the same sign, they're both negative. So if we look at the absolute values, we have a 39 and an 82. If we add those together, we get one hundred twenty one then for our final answer we take the sign that they both had in common which was a negative so we end up with an answer of negative one hundred twenty one okay and finally we have a problem that involves temperatures during a winter storm, the temperature was 25 degrees Fahrenheit at noon. So we started out with 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Then at 2 p.m., the temperature had dropped by 7 degrees. At 4 p.m., the temperature had dropped another 9 degrees. So we're going to use positive and negative numbers to represent the situation, and then we're going to find the current temperature. So if we're starting out at 25 degrees Fahrenheit, that means positive 25 is going to represent our temperature at noon. Now if at 2 p.m. the temperature had dropped by 7 degrees, a drop would translate to a negative number. That means we went down by 7, so we could represent that by negative 7. And then at 4 p.m., the temperature had dropped another 9 degrees, so that's another negative number. So to find the current temperature, we started out at 25, we dropped by 7 degrees, so that means we're adding a negative 7. 
and then we dropped another 9 degrees, so that means we're adding a negative 9. So our current temperature is going to be these three values added together. Put these two together first. Notice these have different signs, one's positive and one's negative. So we have our absolute values. And the 25 is the larger of those two, so we're actually taking 25 minus 7, which gives us 18. And since the 25 had the larger absolute value and that was a plus, that means we get a plus 18. So now we have 18 plus negative 9. These again have different signs. So we have our two absolute values are 18 and 9. 18 is the larger of the two, so we take 18 minus 9. That gives us 9, and then our sign again is going to be the sign that went with the 18, which was a plus. So we end up with plus 9. That means that the current temperature, or in other words, the temperature at 4 p.m., would have been 9 degrees.